Did you guys all make it to this point? Can I get a uh, show of thumbs? Yes, I got it. No? Mediocre? OK, cool. So let's uh, talk quickly about um, the steps that it took to get here um, and what we tried to go through in the tutorial and things that might have been a little tricky. So I think for the most part, uh, defining uh, creating these new classes, adding them, creating new instances, adding them to the parent views. I think we covered that, and I hope that you guys uh, are pretty comfortable with, you know, how do you create a new instance of a view, um, and how do you add it to the current view. Um, and then within slide view, we've created uh, multiple uh, helper functions to create our surfaces, and we're adding these surfaces to this node, uh, which is defined after we've added uh, a modifier for the size. Um, so again, back to our original uh, diagram that we drew out before uh, in Illustrator, where we had like the context, and then a modifier underneath, and then we stored a reference to the render node after adding that modifier. This is kind of the same paradigm here. We have a view class, we have the view, which is kind of like that, top, that node, that top node that we're working with. We create a modifier, and we add that modifier, and then store the node underneath that modifier. And so for the rest of the slide view, as you can see, we're adding to the main node inside the slide view. So what happens is that every single, the, every single one of these renderables underneath this modifier is going to be inheriting the options set inside of this modifier. So here, the modifier uh, has a, a size of um, 400 by 450 pixels, OK? So when we create our background, we don't specify a size in our background surface. How the background surface gets its size is that it looks up its it looks up the render tree, which here, the immediate modifier above it is this root modifier, and it inherits the size from this modifier. I'll give you guys a second to ponder that. Um, another thing that I hope you guys got through without too much trouble is how you actually use the default options. So when we specify values in the default options, it kind of magically appears in our app as this.options, you know, and then the property name is the property name that you sign here. So this is kind of, it's kind of like a magical thing, like how does this happen? Well, it's actually uh, that function, the function that uh, applies that magic is actually inside of the views constructor code. So if you open up view.js, oh, actually you can't, darn it, because of the CDN. So inside of the views code, uh, we have a module called options manager. And what it takes is, or what it does, it takes this default options object and it applies, it, it saves a copy as uh, this.options onto onto the instance of, uh, of whatever class you're working with. And then it, it will take any arguments that you pass into it. So for example, you know, we would create a slide view with um, size colon, whatever size we wanted to pass in, and that would overwrite this size in the default options. So that's something that you'll see as we progress, if you progress through the tutorial, as you start making multiple uh, multiple uh, photo view instances, you see that we've created um, a placeholder for the photo URL. And currently, we're just importing the default, or using the default image from the slide data. Right, so that's just a string URL for the URL. And then eventually, when we create multiple slides, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna Ajax, we're gonna make an Ajax request to the, uh, uh, Picasso Web API, it's going to return an array of, uh, well, it's going to return a JSON 
that we parse to get an array of image URLs. And we take those URLs and we pass them into diff, uh, the slide view class one by one to create a new instance. And each of those URLs get put into this.options.photo URL, which is how it's able to uh, store the, the URL for each instance. So the default options is not only a way to kind of clean up your code so that you have one place to look for all your options for that, mod, uh, for that class. So you know, I don't have to change size in multiple, place, multiple places. I have one place to look for to change all of my you know, different configurations for my app. But it's also a very easy way for us to pass in data from different modules inside of our app around. Does that make sense? Yeah? Cool. Um, so hopefully you guys got through that refactor. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is that there's been uh, an API change to modifiers. So you guys, uh, if you guys have done Famous University before, uh, and you guys went through the positioning lesson, you guys remembered if you want to center something uh, in the center of your, of your screen, you used origin 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And if you want to place something at the center, at the top of your screen, you used origin 0 0.5, 0. But what we have here is we actually have another property called align. So what we've done is that uh, we've actually decoupled, we've actually decoupled the anchor point on a child from the anchor point on the parent. So before, they were, they, uh, they were tightly coupled together. So if you set 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it would, what it was actually doing, it was, it was uh, setting origin 0 0.5 and then align 0 0.5, which is its, its, its equivalent. So origin not only sets the anchor point on the child, it actually also specifies the origin of rotation and scale and skew. So for now, um, there, th we're going to be covering a lot of that. Mike's going to be covering um, origin align in detail this afternoon. But for now, just know that if you want to uh, center something, you specify 0 0.50, 0 0.50. 0. So those two values should be the same. So you want the center of your child to be in the center of its parent. OK. All right, so the next thing the next phase of the tutorial, what we're going to do is uh, we're actually going to build out the slideshow view. So the slideshow view, if you remember, sorry, I should have put the, uh, the wireframe in that. The slideshow view contains all the different slide views, but it also contains this light box component. And this light box component uh, is what is actually transitioning these slides in and out. So it's extremely useful. So we mentioned earlier that you don't want to be uh, removing renderables from your render tree manually. But a light, uh, a light box is a widget that will do this for you uh, extremely efficiently and with transitions involved. So all you have to do is call dot show or dot hide, and it'll show the next renderable or hide the renderable, renderable from the render tree. So. Essentially, what we're going to be building, get through this here. Where we want to be in the, um, the next phase is to be able to do these kind of transitions. So, this is using the light box. These are the default light box options. And what's really cool is that all of these options can be modified to give you a new different transition, a new interaction. So here what we see is that there's an in transform. So these are the default options that you just saw. There's a um, out transform. And for each of these transforms, there is also a uh, transition parameter that you can set. And then there's also the, opa the opacity, the in opacity, and the out opacity, and the show opacity. So what you see here is that when it's coming in, it's scaling up from zero. And as it's going out, it's scaling down to zero. 
and the in opacity is it's opacitating from zero to one and then back down from one to zero as it's going out. So what we can do is we can just cha simply change uh, these parameters. Here all we're doing is specifying the in transform, out transform, the in transition and the out transition and immediately we have a very different looking slideshow app. Right? So what this is saying is that I want on the in transition, I want it to, s the in state, so the start of the, the, the beginning of the incoming transition state, I want, it, I want my, my element to be translated 300 pixels to the right, and then when it comes in, it's gonna take on the default of uh, transform.identity, so it's gonna be centered, right? And on the out transition, at the end of the out transition, I want it to be 500 pixels to the left. And so the, and how, and the in transition objects um, specify how this animation should be done. So when it's coming in, it should take 500 seconds to perform the animation, and it should have an out back curb applied. Meaning on the end, of the transition, the, the, on the end of the animation, it's gonna go a little bit beyond its ending position and then come back. That's what you see, that little bit of a snapping there. Okay? So then the next step is gonna be um, this flipping motion. There's a little bit of flicker there. Uh, in your app, you shouldn't see that, so. Uh, in your app, you shouldn't see that. This has to do with um, the fact that this is in Famous University. We have all these different container surfaces and blah, blah, blah. You guys don't really need to worry about it. But as you're building this, uh, you, won't, you shouldn't see this in your app. So but as the important part is that by just changing these options for your light box, you're creating a completely different interaction in your app. And so this, is, this makes this slideshow app extremely customizable and it's really easy and fun to play with. So let's uh, take another you know, 25 minutes and uh, get up to this point. And we'll walk around and help you guys get here. All right, any questions? Uh, uh, before, we get, before we start on that, uh, any questions on the previous part that you guys didn't get answered? Okay, all right, cool. Well, uh, we'll check back with you and uh, we'll start this process again in like 25 minutes. Right. How's it going? Good. Uh, did all, how many people got to here where you're clicking through? A few in the back, awesome. A couple over there, awesome. Uh, how do you guys feel about the light box widget? And um, so a couple things I want to talk about in the light box. Um, so hopefully you got to um, where you were adding the light box to the slideshow view and then adding the separate views to the light box. And if you didn't, um, you can go to this URL and uh, navigate around to the different JavaScript files by changing the, the file name at the end to get the, uh, to get the finalized code. I'll leave this up here for a second. Did everyone get this? Okay, cool. So, um, a couple things I wanted to talk about. In the create light box function, what, we, what we've done is uh, we've created the light box using the options passed in, um, or using the default options here. And then we've added the light box to the main node of slideshow view. And again, as we talked about before, slideshow view uh, also has this pattern of using a root modifier to encapsulate the size of its, uh, of, of its render branch, essentially, right? So this option.size is going to limit the size of all of its children underneath, including the light box. Um, and then it's going to position everything inside of it with an origin alliance 0.50. So it's going to center 
all of its children renewables in the center and at the top. Uh, and instead of adding all of our individual slide views to the view itself, we're actually adding them to the light box. So we're, what we're doing in Create Slides is we're taking the data, which is our, 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 our array of um, URL strings. We're going to loop through them, and we're going to create a separate slide view for each one of those uh, data objects. And we're storing the and we're storing these, uh, those slide views in an array. But we're actually not adding them to anything yet. But we've added a, uh, a listener on click. It's going to call the show next slide method. And then we're calling show current slide to, sh to bring up the first one. Uh, and it's actually in show current slide that we are calling dot show from Lightbox to transition in the, the slide, the current slide. So this is a little bit different paradigm than what we've been, that we were using before, where we were simply adding renderables to views or even other views to views. Here we're calling a specific method on this widget, dot show, which is going to add in the new renderable. And similarly, if you go into Lightbox and read the, uh, the reference docs, dot hide will remove that renderable from the render tree. Does this make sense? So this widget, the Lightbox widget, and similarly as you guys progress and learn about the render controller, and then in the future when we release scene controller, all three of these widgets work on the same concept that you call a particular method on the widget, and the widget will, do, will perform the add and remove methods for you. And so again, to, reinstate, to reiterate, the adding or removing of renderables from the render tree is not something you want to attempt and manage manually. So use these controllers, use these widgets, Lightbox and the render controller, and, as, and in the future, scene controller to help you do these. Add additions and subtractions. OK, cool. Um, so aside from that, move, uh, changing changing these transforms and transitions should be pretty straightforward. I actually hope that you guys actually um, get to play around with this, because it's really fun. You can make things come from the top, make it like hit the ground and bounce a little bit. You can actually, uh, if, you get, if you guys made it to the animation uh, lesson, the famous 101, it shows you how to use uh, physics transitions. Uh, so you can add a spring effect. You can do a, a bounce transition. You can actually like simulate what would happen if this uh, if a surface was coming in, hitting uh, a wall and bouncing. You can change the wall restitution on all these parameters. So you're actually just able to modify how your app looks and feels by simply changing some of these parameters in the options. So again, it's a very powerful and very fast way to uh, prototype and customize the look and feel of your app. OK, great. So we've actually covered quite a bit of territory uh, so far in our tutorial. So we've gone over how do you create your own custom views, how do you link together views, how do you use a light box to show and hide transitionables in and out, uh, and with animation. So for the rest of the tutorial, um, the main concept that we're going to be going over is really to emphasize what a, uh, a context is and what happens when you create a new context. So here in the next step, uh, a couple steps down, what we've shown here is that we've added a camera surface in our app view simply just to, to spice things up a little bit. And when you click on the surface, we've changed the light box options so that it's dropping from the top down. And then when, you, when it goes out, it's simply just, it looks like it's falling down. So eventually, what we're going to do is we're going to clip the top of this view here uh, so that it looks like the Polaroid image is actually coming out of the camera. OK? So before, 
So this really touches on kind of a, a, an important concept in Famous. Uh, again, that this idea of a view is really an abstract concept. It doesn't really, a view is really just a render node, and render nodes don't actually have any physical properties. I'll, I'll say that again. A render node does not actually have any physical properties. It does not map to the DOM. So when we create a modifier inside of a view, and we add that modifier to the view, that is where size is being defined for all the renderables inside of that view. Okay, so what that means here is even though we have our slideshow view and we've positioned our slideshow view to start here, this is the zero position, right? Because all of our slides are positioned 0 0.50. So at this, where I'm drawing the line here with my mouse, that is, the, that is the top of our slideshow view. We've moved the slideshow view down, okay? But you see that all of our, our surfaces are still appearing above that zero position. So to reiterate, the, the, I, the, I, the view does not clip anything. The view is just a render node. It doesn't have awareness of its own size or the contents within the view. So what we have to do is we actually have to create a new context inside of the view and then apply the CSS property overflow hidden so that the, con the context is able to clip the surfaces within it. And to do so, what we use is a new surface called a container surface. So a container surface, when you create a container surface, it actually creates a new context in your app. And again, whenever you create a new context, you're creating another level, another layer in your DOM tree. So when you create a, so a container surface works pretty similar to uh, surfaces where you specify a property, you specify a size, right? But the difference being you, are actually, you can actually add renderables to your container surface. Normal, normal surfaces are leaves in the tree they can't have any children. But container surfaces can have children added to them. And it is because of this that you're actually able to apply overflow hidden onto the container surface and clip its children. Okay? So that is a very important concept. And even more so, uh, we're gonna be adding this shake method. You can kind of see a little bit, it's not very exaggerated here, but it looks, the Polaroid is shaking a little bit when it comes out, right? But the, the issue is that it doesn't look right. Uh, before, when we had this uh, rotation thing, you can see it here. You can see that when the, the photos uh, fold out, you can actually see perspective. The right edges, as they come out at you, get larger. That's because we set the perspective of the main context to be 1,000. So we did main context that set perspective 1,000. Um, show you in the code real quick. That's right here, after you created the main context. Right? But what's happening uh, here, because we created a container surface, and that container surface has its own context, the perspective is lost. So again, a context is its own isolated rendering environment. So again, in order to get that perspective back, you have to, uh, where is the code? Um, you have to set the perspective on that container surface, right? Cool. So that is the, uh, that's pretty much the, the main lesson that I want you guys to get out of the rest of this tutorial, is that this idea of what is a context, what is a container surface, and how does it actually relate to the, the DOM mapping? Okay. Um, but one quick note that I want to uh, make about container surfaces is that, again, it's creating a new context, and whenever you create a new context, it's going to have performance issue. It's going to uh, decrease your performance a little bit, right? So try to use container surfaces um, only when it's absolutely necessary.
Yeah, question. Eddie. Uh, what are some examples of when it may be necessary? Yeah. Right. So if you are, um, anytime you need to like clip images like this, where you can't just do it with simply simply like layering things, uh, you need to create a container surface for. Right. So if you're doing parallax, um, where you're doing like complex parallaxing, then you would need a container surface for. Because you're going to show the other image, like the, they're going to. Right. So imagine if you have the two elements are moving at different rates, and you would need to clip both of the the children inside of that. When you say it's creating a new context, do you mean it's uh, a nested con context, or is it? Uh, that's right, it is nested, yes. So the new context, that div container, the div with class container, that's going to be nested under your main context because you've added so in the, uh, in the render tree. Yes, yes? Uh, the perspective value, can you describe that? Because I've seen it like at 500 before. Right, here. right, right, right. The perspective. So um, the perspective, the, the numerical value represents the pixel distance the uh, XY plane is from your face. Okay. <laughs> so the closer it is, the more dramatic the 3D effect, okay. right? So if it's infinitely away, any uh, difference in um, the Z position is not going to have as big of an effect. Yeah, good question. All right, so I think we're going to give you guys lunch break at 12, 12.30. Uh, it's 12 to 12.30, that's right. And then we'll start, start here again at 12.30. But is there, are there other things that we can talk about right now? Um, I think that's pretty much, and that, I mean, that's pretty much the main um, educational content for Slideshow. Um, if you guys want to work through the rest of the tutorial while we're here, you guys have until uh, 12.30. When we reconvene, yeah. Could you go over the main lesson you said? The, like the main lesson you want us to take away? Could you go over it again? Since we have a little bit of time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so here are the the main lessons that you guys that I would like you guys to walk away with. Um, what is a view? Uh, how do you construct a new view class? I really want you guys to be familiar with the boilerplate code. So be familiar with, you know, of course, you know, how do you import different modules? Um, how do you apply, how do you use the options manager? So when you put in options into your default options, be comfortable in accessing those options in this set options, okay? And then being able to pass in data from one module into the next module. So here in main.js, we're creating our app view with our data. And then in app view, we're going to be creating slideshow with that same data. But the thing is, the data is being passed in from main.js, right? So we have a placeholder in our default options for the data being passed in. And then we access that data using this.options. And then we pass in that data into the slideshow view. And in slideshow view is where we actually use that data to create our slide views. So yes, getting really comfortable with using the options manager. It's not difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. And then you'll get it like, oh, sweet. Um, understanding how to uh, nest your different views together. Um, understanding how to uh, create instances of, create multiple instances of your views. Um, how do you position things in your views? How do you use uh, a size, uh, uh, like a, a root modifier to create that main node? So that, that pattern may change in the future. Um, but the idea of inheriting a size from a, from a parent modifier. So in slide view, We created our background that didn't have a size, and it's inheriting from the parent modifier, right? So understanding that aspect of the modifier chain and the render tree, and how do you inherit from the parent modifiers? Um, 
Lightbox, how do you use Lightbox? You know, adding a Lightbox to a view and then calling dot .show, dot .hide on the renderables. And then finally, uh, the difference, uh, what, con what contexts are and how they map to the DOM. Yes. Oh, uh, explain set perspective one more time. Yes. So by default, your uh, context does not come with any perspective. So when you rotate things in, uh, when you move things in the Z plane, or when you rotate you rotate them out of the X Y plane, you won't see any perspective. Okay. Um, let's see where my let's see where are we at right now. Okay, so we're here. All right. So if I disable this, you'll just see that it doesn't look like it's actually coming out of the page, right? So if I set this to be, um, I think my all right. What's that? All right, ten thousand. You can see barely anything, right? It looks like it's growing a little bit, but definitely not as much. So if we do 500, whoa, it's like you have 3D glasses on, kind of, right? So that is the effect of perspective. The smaller the number, the closer it is, so that when it flips out, it, like, it looks really big. Okay, any last, yes, in the back. What's that? The flickering. Um, the, flick, the flickering that's going on here. I think that uh, has to do with the Z index of the photo, uh, the photo view. Basically the idea is sometimes when you have uh, DOM elements that share the exact same CSS Z index and the exact same uh, Z transform and Z space, when you do apply like rotations and stuff to them, the DOM ends up messing up a little bit when it tries to layer them. So you can get around this by like adding Z translation forward of the image versus the back surface, so that yeah. the browser has an easier time understanding how to layer properly. It's also kind of like iffy on browser to browser, as different browsers have different layering implementations. So anytime you can be kind of more explicit mm. in how you're layering things that kind of exist in the same Z space is good. Yeah. So this is, um, yeah, this is, it bugs the, sh like, when you work at Famous and you see flickering, it, it like bugs the shit out of you. So um, yes, that's definitely an issue. And I try to address it using, by doing exactly what Mike said, with specifying the Z index of the actual surfaces, um, and then transforming them but maybe perhaps the transformation, the transform values aren't big enough. Um, what's that? Just make it one. Yeah. Here, let me make. Uh, you round now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. That. That's hard. There we go. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yay! Woo! Okay. So yes. So just what's that? Uh, in slide view. Um, in your photo modifier, you ha uh, so the transform.translate, it's uh, X, Y, and Z. Z was 0 0.1 before. So just make it a little bit bigger. So what happened was we just started implementing rounding in our pixels to make text look really crisp, you know, so it doesn't look like blurry. Uh, but because we're rounding, now we're losing uh, some of the precision that we had before. So bef previously, this was set at zero, uh, 0.1, and this was 0 0.05, and then this was uh, zero. So by making this one, or here, if we make that two, and make this one, uh, <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Uh, yay! No more flickering. That's hot. That's, it's really that was hot. for teaching. That was a teaching example. That was, yeah, that was a teaching example. Yes, we did that on purpose. Is the flickering more prevalent with certain transitions? Uh, no. So this was 
purely due to the fact that we didn't specify the, the, the Z translation properly. So this demo was built uh, a couple weeks ago. So the code was uh, written before this new uh, feature was uh, added like a couple days ago. So that's why, yeah, and it wasn't updated in the code. Yeah? Can you explain the difference between setting the Z index directly on the properties and transform? It's a tiebreaker. Yeah. 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 So the big difference is when you actually set a transform in Z space, when you set the transform in Z space, you're actually moving that element a pixel closer or a pixel further away. Whereas when you set a CSSC index, it's actually just telling the DOM uh, the painting order in how to do the layering implementation. So, you know, a lot of times if you use something like this where you're translating one or two pixels forward, sometimes when you actually like rotate that, you'll see that little bit of buffer space in between. So sometimes, depending on what it is, you can like kind of hack around and see, you know, can I use uh, Z space to transition this forward. It kind of depends on what your perspective is, or can I just use straight CSS Z indexing to just like decide I want this layer to be on top of that layer. Which one takes precedence? Uh, I think uh, I mean Z space does because it's on a different Z plane than the other than the other layer. So try Z uh, translating and Z first. Yes. Uh, yeah. So I noticed that. Yep. That's probably because the film is set to a fixed size. So can you say something about how to um, translate perspective in Z space um, on the context itself? Like, do you just, do you just set the Z space of the actual view, or, or do you change the perspective in order to, let's say, move out from a series of objects and make them look small? Yeah. So it depends. So the size, when you have, so when you have perspective, um, let me actually just repeat your question so I understand it properly. So you're asking um, why doesn't perspective change the size of the film? That's the first layer of the question, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, and, that's, and the reason is because uh, the default is uh, the Z gets created at Z equal to zero. So when you look at um, the photo modifier here, so this Z position, we're translating it forward only by two pixels. If we made this 200, um, let's change this perspective back to 1,000 so it doesn't blow up on us. Do you see that? Yeah. So, OK, so that, that sort of addresses the second layer of my question, which is if you want to change perspective on a group of objects, you're going to actually use the Z modifier, the Z transform, correct? Yes. Yeah, say, well, yeah, you can move things like back in Z space and they're going to get smaller. Right. Okay. Yes. So, like, default position is Z zero. You're going to get the defined pixel sizes you want. Right. And then everything's going to look different based on its, like, translation. Right. So, if I scale something, start at zero and throw it back to, like, a million in Z, negative a million in Z so space. the perspective, the main context perspective then, is that more like a ratio in the amount of Z space that you're looking at? Or? No, it's a discrete pixel value. So if you can imagine like, so what will happen is if I have like my, if I have my origin point here and my perspective is set to a thousand here, I will see everything that if it's translated in Z, 500 pixels, it'll be halfway. If it's translated 2,000 pixels, it'll actually be behind my head 1,000 pixels. So you can play tricks where you could have something actually appear like 2,000 pixels behind me and 500 pixels over and translate it back to the origin and you'll see the effect as it comes in. Okay. You're pretty much defining your viewport with regards to that origin point. So the, each, each context is its own isolated rendering environment. So if you want a group of renderables to have one perspective, you add them to one context. And everything outside of that context will not have the perspective applied to it. Cool. All right, guys, uh, lunch is ready. So we will come back here around 1230.